some tips, like what are some things that you learned that you could, you know, we can learn from? Never start fundraising after the deal is under contract. <laughs> I think a lot of people sit there and say, well, I'll talk to so-and-so when I have a deal under contract. And that's way, way too late. You know, for us, it was like we talked about, right? Even before we had our first deal for over a year, every time I talked to people, I'd be like, hey, I'm looking to invest in real estate. This is kind of what I'm doing. And I always piqued the interest. My partner, Mike, same way. He's really well networked in the area he's in. So that's the first step. I think the second step is once you get somebody who wants to commit to you and is doing it, is ask that question, like, do you know anybody else like yourself who might want to look at this deal as well? I mean, that, that has led us to so many people that helped us reach that $2 million raise in the third deal. That was, that was incredible for us because we had a small pool and there was no way that small pool was going to get us that $2.2 .2 million raise on the third deal. So asking that question, do you know anybody else has been huge for us and it's expanded our network quite a bit. And then also just telling people what you're doing, right? When you have a deal under contract or you're closing deals, you know, push that out to your network to let people know that, Hey, we're closing deals. We're doing well. That attracts other people who want to be around that type of success and that, that for us has been hugely beneficial, right? And that's been part of being part of really good coaching programs and mentorship programs. I mean, you pay for it up front, Eric, but the people you're exposed to are like-minded people. And so you start throwing those deals out there and showing your closing deals. A lot of folks want to join in, join in with you. Yeah. So that's actually one of the questions I get to in the show is basically around coaching. So we might as well just go there now. Um, you did mention a coaching program. Was it, and sounds like you agree. I mean, was it worth your time and energy effort to, to go into that? All of it, all of it. I've done, I've done three different programs, Eric. It's been, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that my wife and I put into it. And it's been worth every single penny, every one, right? I think for us, it was a couple of lessons, right? Is it, it made the learning curve a lot less painful, right? And so, you know, having that coach is when you're first doing it, I'm not sure, you're probably like everybody else, right? When you first get into it, you're like, okay, you're eager, you're hungry. And every deal you look at, and for some reason, you can always make it make sense, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> you can always make, make a spreadsheet, make it look sense. Yeah, yeah you, you can pencil it to death, that. right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But we had a really good coach who had been in the business for over 10 years. You know, he had a thousand units under, under, under management at the time. And, you know, we were sending deals to him. He's like, uh, it looks nice, but it's a 1967 build. And they haven't touched the plumbing. So, you know, if, if there hasn't been a CapEx problem, you're going to have the problem, right? And so there are all these things that he pointed out to us that helped us kind of refine how we started to look at deals. And we filtered things out much faster moving forward after that. So that, that was one, one of the big ones, right? It's just, you know, getting around that. The second one really for us was you're around people that are like-minded and who are doing it at a successful level. And because you're in that mentorship program and in that group, they're very open to, to helping you out. I mean, people love to talk about their success and what they're doing. And so it was really great to be exposed to those people and get a lot of those like, Bernie, that's great, but you should probably look at this or that's a good market, but it's already kind of starting to mature. I would look here instead. And that really led us much more quickly to something that was good for us than kind of you know just throwing money at a bad deal and hoping it worked and learning lessons the painful way. I think for us, Eric, it was, it was more about if we're going to syndicate, we didn't want to do something that was going to harm our investors' money, especially in the first deal or the second deal. And so we wanted to make sure that we were in a, in a really good sound spot that we delivered and exceeded the expectations of people to build a credibility long-term, right? Even if it meant less money for us up front, right? Or even yeah, I mean, cost us money. 